course, Eric Anderson starting in midfield today, usually a forward. So let's get, why don't you give the rest of the Boston Rams lineup, Tom? Yeah, sure, right ahead. Brett Conrad starting in net for your Rail Boston Rams. The Rail Boston Rams, Jimmy Costa coming out with a 4-5-1 this evening. Keegan Campbell and Anthony Bauman on the outsides. David Dembra and Matt Keyes, your two center backs this evening. Russell Oz Us Livince will be the center defensive mid. Andrew Souza and Eric Anderson complete the midfield. Gustavo Santos and Manny Andrade are your two wingers. Santos on the left, and Andrade on the right, and you have Cole de Normandy up, up top as a striker. And Cole de Normandy, a former two-time runner-up in the Gatorade High School Player of the Year. I mean, this is a team with a lot of talent on it. They're young, and they're still getting used to this USL PDL, and they're playing against one of the better teams in this uh, division. So you look at what Real Boston has to go up against tonight. They have to use their youth to their advantage, and their energy has to be there from the tip-off, from the kickoff, excuse me. All right, and so why don't we give you the Ottawa Fury lineup as as both players are now on the field, uh, both teams are now on the field to introduce the starting lineups. So Chad Bush is starting for the second time between the pipes for the Ottawa Fury. The four defenders are Sean Foster, uh, Jacob Van Compernol, uh, Franc Fran Francis Letourneau Matthew, and, the, and Ar uh, Arthur Pieperkoff. The three, four, they're actually doing a 4-4-2, four, four, so the four midfielders are Jacob Barron, Giotis Manginis, uh, Nic Nicholas Jelicic, and Sandro Rachkovic. And the two strikers, which they rotate from game to game, is Eddie Jones and Carl Hayworth. So we'll take a quick break for the rest of the introduction and the rest of the pregame ceremonies. But we'll be back here at Muscato Stadium just shortly. You're listening to the Boston Rams Broadcast Network in, conjunction, in conjunction with Eastern Community Access Television. Ladies and gentlemen, a few weeks ago, the Rams family had a passing of a great, great friend of our team. We would initially like to take this moment to have a moment of silence to remember George Aguiar. As I said, George was a huge present for the Real Boston Rams, and we will always hold him in our heart. Thank you very much. And now that we ask that you please rise as we honor the spirit of both the United States and Canada with the playings of the national anthems. First anthem it will be the Canadian national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, the Boston Rams would like to introduce Nina Howe, who will be singing the Star Spangled Banner. Yeah. 
30 seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, the Boston Rams would like to uh, uh, introduce our honorary captain for this evening, Tom Shirley. Mr. Shirley has been very focused on soccer his whole career and is looking to continue to further the sport in the United States. Thank you, Mr. Shirley. All right, welcome back here to Muscato Stadium here in Easton, Massachusetts. The coin flip has gone. The two captains, Matt Keyes, and it looks like the other captain is Carl Hayworth for the, the Ottawa Fury. They go to their separate ends of the field. The Rams will take their honorary pregame picture, as they always do, and we're about to get underway. So, Tom Quinlan, why don't you give your keys to today's match? I think the keys to today's match already start in the first couple of minutes. The Rams cannot come out flat-footed. It's important that they bring the attack early. Andrew Souza put in two goals against this very explosive Ottawa Fury team. Now another key for Ottawa is to break that back line. Matt Keyes is a very strong defender. He stands at about 6'3", 6'4", physical, young sophomore to UMass Amherst, plays Division I originally from Waltham, Massachusetts. And if the Ottawa Fury can find a way to break that back line today, I think it'll be a quick game for Ottawa. And they'll be able to you know, get to Brett Conrad early and uh, could create some big troubles for the Rams. But going into this match, Davis, it's important for both teams. The Rams could go one of two ways. They can go up or they can go down. They have two, Ottawa has two games in hand on the Rail Boston Rams who sit in first place, Ottawa does. If the Rail Boston Rams can get a couple of points back today, it's a brand new season. The Rams put themselves in a very good position to finish out the season since they don't have to see Ottawa for the rest of the year. All right, so now it's Andrew Souza and Cole de Normandy standing over the ball at center field here at Oliver Ames High School, their stadium, which generously let, lets the Boston Rams play their games. They're looking at the referee setting his watch, and we are about to get underway as the whistle blows. So now it's Souza with the ball, getting it back to Keegan Campbell at the back line. Possession will be huge in this game, especially against a strong team like the Ottawa Fury. So Campbell crosses it all the way over to Davide Dambra. Dambra tries to play a long ball forward to Cole de Normandy, but that's going to be headed away and kicked forward by the captain, Carl Hayworth. Now it's played over to the back line to Sean Foster who plays it forward. Looking Now Andrew Souza tries to bring the ball down but it's cleared once again. It's a lot of broken play here to begin the game as the ball's on the far side of the field. Now it is, looks like Eric Anderson helping out. A Anderson is playing a little bit more of a holding midfielder role as he's more of a center forward for the team. But now it's Souza trying to play it forward on Andrade. Andrade makes the run forward. Now they could be on something on here and it's gonna be a foul. A foul against Andrade. The man who is guilty with the foul is Jacob Van Kompernol. And it, we'll have to wait and see if a card comes out. It doesn't look like it, one will. But that was very close to a goal scoring opportunity for the Rams, so that meant that would mean that the yellow card would come out. So now an early free kick for the Rams. Good ball there by Andrew Souza finding Manny Andrade, who was running into space. Andrade drawing the foul on Ottawa, and he puts Souza in a great position right outside the 18 to bury this one home in two minutes in, and give her the Rams a 1 0 lead. So now Souza is standing over the ball after that great ball, as Quin Tom Quinlan mentioned, and he's going to take it right towards goal. It's going to go right off of the head and out of play. Eddie Jones was standing in the wall. He took it right off of the noggin, and right we're going to have the first piece. and we have the first corner kick of the game. And that's going to be a corner kick on the far sideline for the Rams, and it's going to be Gustavo Santos to take it. Santos did not play the last game versus did not start rather the last game versus Massachusetts, starting this one for the Rams today. Uh, we'll get to him in a second. I want to talk about Gustavo a little bit later in the half. All right, so Souza is going to take the corner as well. Keys is up in the box. He's going to be take a long ball through. It's going to be a header by Andrade, but it's going to be held on to by Chad Bush. Of course, Bush has only gotten one start between the pipes for the Ottawa Fury. Their usual goalkeeper is Niels Carlson, who has a 1.5 goals allowed average. Of course, Chad Bush in his only game has not allowed a goal. And now the ball is forward for the Fury as it goes over to the far side. 
and it's going to go out of play. Going back to Gustavo Santos for a second, you know, he's a guy that didn't start this last match, and, you know, as the Rams try to clear the ball here, you know, he's not a guy that's gotten consistent time. So, I mean, you know, he's really trying to prove himself and say that he belongs on this first squad, and I think this is a good game to really prove himself. Absolutely, and, this, it's, and Santos almost had a ball there on the far side, but that ball will go out of bounds. Sousa was the one looking for Cole to Normandy. And it's going to be a quick throw by the Furies. It's played back. Eric Anderson tries to challenge for it, and it'll go back to the Fury. So now it's the Fury on the far side. As DeNormandy comes up with it now, it's going to be played back to uh, Osli who is playing actually for Luke Finkelstein, who got the double yellow against the Western Mass Pioneers, so he has to set out a match. Now it's Andrade getting the ball. Now it's to Normandy playing the ball forward, and it's going to be another slide challenge, and it's going not the foul is not going to be called. I think to Normandy went down there on himself a little bit. I mean, I definitely could see where he was looking for the foul, but a little embellishment, and the referee did not give him the advantage call. So a long ball played by Campbell, now picked up by Leavensi. Ost Leavensi now loses it into into the middle to the skipper Carl Hayworth. Hayworth. Looking on the far side. He's going to try to go for goal, but Osli Avensi is there. Now this is Panamanginas trying to get the ball through, and it'll be a good challenge there by Matt Keyes. So now outlet over to Andrade. Andrade looking for Souza. A lot of high pressure here by the Ottawa Fury as the Rams are really struggling to get the ball out of their own half. So now ball played over into the middle, over looking for Hayworth. He went down looking for a foul. But it'll be Conrad that gobbles up the ball and gets it out to Anthony Bowman. Ottawa really coming out strong like we thought they would. The Rams cannot be playing on the back of their toes here. The ball's in the air way too much. They have to keep it on the ground now. Beat Ottawa on the ground. So st still extremely early in this one. We're about to get over into the sixth minute of the game. No score here at Muscato Stadium. Now... Fury has it in their midfield. They get it out to one of their backs, Jacob Van Kompernol. Now it's Nicholas Jelovic. Fury is really known for keeping possession. Uh, they have one of the better teams here in the uh, North, Northeast Division of the USL PDL. As it's headed forward, Austin. Diavensi tries to come down with it, looking for Anderson, but it's going to be cut out here. And Hayworth takes a shot on. He's taken a few shots there, out from about 30 meters out, but both of them blocked on the way over to Conrad. The Rams' pressure in the final 18 is good, but I mean, Ottawa, they're just not finding their passes right now. The Rams cannot let Ottawa work down the field as much. And the Rams now keep it on the ground. It's starting to work here. So now De Normandy gets it out to Andrade. Andrade's dangerous from this position. He gets it shot on his great save there. And it's headed towards goal by Anderson. It's going to be out for a corner. Good sequence there for the Real Boston Rams. Cole De Normandy right down the middle of the pitch, coming down the near sideline. Found Andrade. Andrade had a good angle on the shot. Just a great save. And you can't say anything else about that. And you like the fact that the Rams put good pressure on that rebound, too. Could have created an opportunity to score. Now, of course, Andrade can play on both wings. He's starting tonight on the right. And actually, that was Suze who had that ball out go for a goal kick. And that's a foul now on Suze in the midfield. The beneficiary there being Jacob Barron. So Barron's going to take it quickly. And he will get it four. Now Barron tries to get it over now to Manginas. Manginas. It's a little bit too far in front of him, and it's going to go to Conrad. So Conrad, like I said before, starting between the pipes. They've been rotating their, their goalkeepers so far this season. Of course, Conrad started their last second-to-last home game against Seacoast United, and then Keaty Siegel started the one against the Mass Pioneers on Friday. So that ball will go out of bounds, so we'll have to wait for a ball over on the far side of the field. Well, another thing, too, uh, you know, and as the ball goes out again, once it'll be another throw for the Rams that you look at is that Ottawa played last night against GPS Portland in Portland. So the Fury playing on a road trip right now, and the Rams, you know, they got to, you know, capitalize on 
Ottawa's falter, and I mean big falter last night against the very strong Portland GPS Portland team, four to one. So the Rams playing against you know maybe a beaten up team today, and if they can you know just wear them down minute by minute, progression happens, and the Rams could take advantage and you know get on the scoreboard. Now it's Andrade kicking the ball out of bounds on the right side of the field. Of course, you mentioned DPS Portland. They are on top, the Northeast Division of the USL PDL right now, as it is Mangina's trying to get the ball forward. Now it's over to Hayworth. Hayworth, oh, excuse me, not Hayworth. It was Eddie Jones. Eddie Jones playing a little deeper. Now it's the ball is through for Jacob Bear, and it's going to be a penalty kick, it looks like. That's on, that's on Keys. Keys lost his man right there, and that's, that's exactly why. Matt Keys, the guy was coming down the middle, and there's a yellow card issued for the Rams. That's that's not good. Who was that on? That looks like that was on It looks Keaton like that Campbell. was on Keevan Campbell. You're right. So that's the first caution of this game. Piece, it's going to be a shot from the spot here. The first one conceded here in the Rams' 2012 season as Matt Keys has his hands on his knees as he knew he blew that assignment. Now it's Brett Conrad. It's all up to Brett Conrad, as Carl Hayworth is going to take the penalty from the spot. Of course, Davide Dombra is trying to cheat a little bit. Over on that. Now it's going to be Hayworth gets the ball in, and it's going to be a goal, a goal for the uh, Ottawa Fury here in the tenth minute of today's game, and they are on the board one to nothing here at Muscato Stadium. The bench not happy. Jimmy Costa just smacked his hands in disgust and you can't blame him. The defense was not strong there. Nobody could, I mean, the ball was being played on the ground. People were finding holes and it just, it's a very rough start for the Rams. Nine minutes in, already down one nothing. Not the start that Coach Jimmy Costa envisioned. And it's also a rough start for Matt Keyes who is captaining today's Rams squad, as we mentioned before. He's actually been the, merely the mainstay in the back line. Of course, they brought in Davide Dambra, a center defender from Italy. We starting uh -huh. tonight. Now the ball's given away. And it's once again Hayworth. Hayworth trying to get some space, and it's cleared out there by Os Lievensi. So the new center holding midfielder for the Rams comes up big in that situation. Uh, he had to make up for his mistake, though. A poor pass in the Rams could have conceded another goal only a minute in between. That could have been a very devastating situation early in this match for Real Boston. So now it's Jacob Barron now trying to get it forward. A cross comes in, but it's cleared out there by Davide Dombra, and he'll go out for a throw-in. Look at this fury pressure right now, Davis. I mean, they are just down the throats of the Real Boston Rams. Pass, 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 pass. It's clinical, and Ottawa has this Rams defense figured out right now. I mean, I think if I'm Coach Jimmy Costa, I might even drop one more to the back to give you know, that defense some help. It looks like Ottawa coming off that 4-1 loss looks fresh. The long throw comes in, and it's going to be knocked down by Brett Conrad as Francis Letourneau Matthew was the one with the long throw, and, he's, and Conrad gets it out quickly to Campbell. Campbell gets it over to Andrade. Andrade loses the touch-up for a second, gets it back, but now a slide tackle comes in by the way of Nicholas. Nic Yelichich. What did we say about this Ottawa team? They are aggressive. Wow. So now it's Campbell getting over to Oslivensi, trying to find Santos over on the left side. And it'll be now forward to DeNormandy, but he's going to be called off sides. Oh, DeNormandy couldn't hold his line, and Santos saying, play the ball out wide. He's right. The Rams are keeping the ball on the right side of the field way too much right now. Switch to that left side. You know, Gus Santos is very dangerous. He has good foot skills, and he's a young player at a Tufts University. They need to give him the chance and try to give him the ball. He needs those touches. So the ball played forward here now for the Fury. It's given back here to Eddie Jones. Jones uh, listed as a forward but playing a little bit deeper. Now gets it forward to his skipper. Now out wide to Manginas. Manginas gets it into the box, but Brett Conrad comes off his line. Great cold keeping there by Conrad. And Brett Conrad coming out quickly and jumps on top of the ball. But you know what? The Rams, the reason why that you know opportunity was created was because the Rams are off of another turnover. Long ball here to DeNormandy, but DeNormandy is going to be called for the foul. Yeah, he grabbed the guy's arm. He can't do that. It looks like he was on riding uh, the... Yeah. Joseph Dawkins of Ottawa. Yeah. 
So it's now it's in Fury possession once again. They're showing a lot of good possession here, but Sousa cuts it out. Sousa playing a little bit deeper than he probably wants to right now. As he tries to play it forward to Andrade once again, Andrade getting it forward, but Bush comes off his line and collects the ball. Give credit to the back line of Ottawa right now. They're doing a good job keeping Andrade right in front of them. So now it's a great slide tackle here by Andrade, but it's going to be called a foul. Yeah, man, he's not happy, and you, know, you can't you can't blame him. Him, Sean Foster, and Nicholas Jelicic, uh really doing a good job of you know keeping Andrade out of that final third, and Andrade, you know, with that slide tackle that you just mentioned, shows his anger and emotion, and just so frustrated he can't get around, the, you know, those two center defenders right now, but. If it's not working, Davis, switch it to the other side. You know, change it up a little bit, maybe. Of course, it's Andrade again. The matchup today is Andrade versus Jacob Van Kumpernol. And he was the one that went down with the injury. But now the ball's played back in. And Eric Anderson's trying to come down with it. Ball, the ball is cleared out. Matt Keyes tries to head it forward. Now it's Davide Dombra getting it forward to, to Santos. But now it's back with the Fury as it's on the far side now. Played over to the middle. Now it's cleared out as Ch Sean Foster comes f forward a little bit and it's going to go out off of the Rams. So 15th minute now here at Muscato Stadium, which is means it's now time for our Rams trivia teaser. Of course, today is also the beginning matches of the uh, Confederations Cup, the FIFA Confederations Cup between the six confederations and two of the host nations, one of them being obviously Brazil, who's the World Cup host nation. So we want to know who has the most Confederations Cup victories as the ball is played forward here. Shot on goal. It's going to go up above the crossbar. This could be a corner kick for Otto and a nice strike there from the attacker, Eddie Jones. Just missed it, and Brett Conrad got a tip on it right as it went over the crossbar. So, of course, if you, want, if you think you know the answer, go to our Real Boston Rams Facebook page and tell us what you think. Or you can tweet us at Real Boston Rams using the hashtag Rams Trivia. So now a corner kick from the Fury. We're 16 minutes into this one. It comes in, and it's going to be too short. Headed out by Gustavo Santos, and then a, another header there by Manny Andrade. And it's going to be a foul here by Jacob Barron, who came in a little bit too aggressively on Andrade. What was that? What was that trivia question again? Of course, it was who, which country? has won the most Confederations Cups. Of course, the Confederations Cup starting in 1997. And the ball's played back here to the Fury as Chad Bush comes off his line, well protected there by Sean Foster, who's doing a good job containing DeNormandy thus far. Of course, DeNormandy, a Rams Academy pr uh, product. As it's headed forward here now into the midfield with Eric Anderson. Anderson gets it back to Dombra, who's getting it out wide. Two and forward to Gustavo Santos. But tough touch. Of course, as you mentioned, Santos has had some inconsistent playing time. He's kind of been trading places with Kento Nakamura, his Tufts teammate, uh, in the wide areas. As the ball is played over to the near side with Campbell challenging here with uh, Manginas, and it's gonna be a foul on Campbell. Campbell has a yellow card already against him. Of course, he conceded that penalty, which is the only goal so far in this game. I just noticed uh, the, the Fury jerseys have their last name on the back. Of course, not very big, so we can see them, but of course, the Fury being around for a lot longer may have a little bit of a bigger budget. So they can afford to put the names on the back of their jerseys. Winning does that to you. <laughs> so now it's Van Compernol, whose name I can actually see, throwing it into. Now Jacob Barron gets it back to Van Compernol, who's over off the overlap. He tries to get a cross in. Conrad comes off his line. And does a good job getting that one. Otto has been around forever, just like you mentioned. And, you know, that... It's one of the great thing, great things that they have is that you know they get to, you know, play against this American talent and, uh, you know, with the schedule that they have, more times than not, it plays into their favor, and that's why they've won so much in uh, this uh, division in the Northeast. 
Now the Rams collect a foul, play quickly here by Keys. Now forward to Davide Dombra from Davide Dombra, but it's gonna go be too far in front of Cole de Normandy. So now Chad Butch just throws, rolls the ball out. Now this is Nikola Jelovic, Jelicic, excuse me. And it's back to the goalkeeper now, Jelicic. Getting it forward, trying to find his, his, his teammate Eddie Jones and he's not gonna able to come down with it, but now it's the captain Hayworth trying to get it forward, but it's cleared out here. And a foul, that was gonna be a foul against Anthony Bowman. Of course, good sportsmanship here as Hayworth, or excuse me, Eddie Jones helps Bowman off the ground. Rams starting to play a little bit better here. The pressure is changing and the communication is stronger. And now the ball is being played a lot more wide. There was a lot of balls being played in the middle and uh, congested passing in the first 10 minutes. And I think that's changed over the course of these past 10 minutes. And let's see how they can improve in moving forward. 19th minute here as the Fury lead one to nothing with a goal coming in the 10th minute off of a conceded penalty. It was Hayworth on the goal who took the penalty from the spot as the, uh, the Fury who are trying to reclaim that top spot in the Northeast East USL PDL division. Andrade a little bit frustrated with himself as he tried to kick it forward, but it'll go out of bounds. Van Coppernell gets it forward to his teammate. Now it's back to the back line once again. Jimmy not happy with the attack right now. I could just see it in his face. So why don't we take a quick look at these USL PDL Northeast Division standings as it's GPS, the GPS Portland Phoenix is at the top with four wins, two draws, and only one loss. The Ottawa Fury who lost to the GPS Portland Phoenix in their last game. They're in, in the second position with three wins, one draw and a loss. And then it's the Western Mass Pioneers who the Rams played on Friday. They have two wins, two draws and a loss. And then Vermont Vultures, CFC Azul, Real Boston Rams, and Seacoast United Phantoms are the bottom four teams. And you know what? Those bottom four teams can all switch, and you know it's still a very young season. The Rams, if they can take points today, it's important going forward. Yeah, like I said earlier, they have two games in hand on Ottawa. I mean, this can be a completely different season. It could be for the better should the Rams win tonight as a very aggressive challenge from Matt Keyes right there. And you know, not going to be a card, but I mean, you definitely see Ottawa Fury's man, Sandro Rakjakovic, holding yeah. his leg. I mean, like, <laughs> Matt Keyes is a big boy. He's going to hurt somebody if he goes in on a tackle like that. I'll tell you that. Yeah, we've seen some great challenge here from Keyes so far in this game. And, of course, we get to see him every day in practice. And, uh, of course, we saw him in, in the open tryout. He basically put one of the open tryout hopefuls in, in his place by having a really aggressive sliding challenge over on the, the right side. That was really fun to watch. So you could tell his skills were very early. Now it's Ost Dialensi trying to get it forward. But now it's back to Bowman, Bo or, or Hayworth, I should say. Hayworth puts a shot on net, but it'll be just wide of far the less post. Scoreboard seems like it's having a little malfunction right now, and it seems it's got the eye of the bench of the Real Boston Rams saying, hey, how much time is left up there? How much time is left up there? Like children in grammar school. I think the refs got it, though. They keep the official, They keep that stuff on the field, that official stuff. I think, I think they should just banish scoreboards. Of course, the ball played forward here from Andrade. That's going to be kicked out of bounds, but another great change here to get forward for the Rams. Andrade gets it over to Keegan Campbell, gets it back to Andrade. Being challenged by Ken Compernol, and he Andrade loses possession. The ball is cleared out. But Campbell keeping possession gets to, over to Ost Vienci. As the ball is played forward to Andrade, but it's going to be offsides. That's the second offsides for the Real Boston Rams, and another ball played in the air. So I think they've had more success in this game, just keeping it on the ground and you know passing clinically that way. Of course, it's a beautiful night here in the mid 70s here in Easton, Massachusetts. The lights are starting to come on as the sun sets. It's 7.25 Eastern time, so it's starting. the sun's starting to set here as the ball is played out by the goalkeeper, but kept in on the far side. That was Arthur 
pipe Peepercoff. And Peepercoff will take the throw as Bowman hits it out of bounds. Now it's Hayworth. Hayworth trying to get it forward, but is unable to as Andrew Souza is, has the ball trying to make a run forward, but is dispossessed in the midfield. So the key so far with the Ottawa success is they're able to, they're able to control the midfield, which is probably one reason why the Rams have played, had to play so many balls over the top. As the ball is played forward here, Eddie Jones tries to get it forward to uh, Hayworth, but it'll go through to Brett Conrad. Does it seem like the Rams are playing with any type of urgency right now to you? I mean, it's it's still early in the game. They're still trying to find their rhythm, and they're they're trying to connect on their these plays. As Santos gets the ball forward, and it's he's going to get sandwiched here by two Fury players, but he's going to follow his run as Van Copernol gets it back to Bush, the goalkeeper. And he had uh, Santos had Anderson in the middle of the field before he got sandwiched. He should I surprised he didn't see him any quicker. Santos has been making a lot of runs up the middle, not making too many runs down the wing. As the ball's played forward, but it's going to go back to the goalkeeper, Brett Conrad. So 26 minute here as the Ottawa Fury lead one to nothing. We're just past the halfway point here in the first half. No real um, injuries, so it might be, there might not be any added time here at the end of the first half as now it's played out wide to Gustavo Santos. Santos looking looking up, looking for Souza. Souza trying to play it over the top to Andrade, but it's going to be Van Comprenol who's going to get out and clear it out of the way. So Hayworth trying to make a run for. Now it's Eddie Jones following the pass back to uh, the goalkeeper. Now it's played back to Hayworth. Hayworth Gets dispossessed here by Davide Dombra, and then now Hayworth fouls Dombra on the way back. Dombra like a little pest in there, causing a real big problem for the Ottawa Fury. Has, uh, did a good job of drawing the foul and uh, frustrating the Fury attack. So Hayworth gets a few words there from the referee, so that might be an indicator that he might get a caution somewhat soon. As the ball played forward to Gustavo Santos is cut out. And it'll go back, all, the ball will be cleared all the way back to Brett Conrad. So a very slow pace to this game. Of course, the first game was pretty high pace with Sousa taking a lot of shots on goal for the Rams, getting the two goals that the Rams had. Of course, the Rams weren't, weren't able to get a point on the road in, in the Fury's season opener back in May. And so now the Fury are trying to return the favor here against the Rams, trying to get some early goals to put, put the Rams back in their spot. So now the ball is played forward to us, Lee Eventsy. Eventsy's trying to make a run forward. Cross could come in as Lee Eventsy's on the left wing, and the ball is gonna go out for a corner, I believe. So it's gonna be, it was good defense there by the Fury, but a great run by Osley Avensi, who just joined the team. He played his first game on Friday against the Western Mass Pioneers, and he forces that corner from the Fury. So now it's Souza here in the 28th minute as Keyes and Dombra come forward from their center defense positions. Souza puts the ball in. It's going to be Anderson with a chance on it, but it's going to be played forward by Manginas. Now Santos with another chance, but it gets the ball slide tackled away from him. And now Eddie Jones keeps the ball with the Fury. So Van Compernol gets it over into the middle. Now this is Eddie Jones. Jones trying to get it over to the wing. That is Manginas, and that'll ball go, go out of play for a throw. Actually, I believe it'll, yeah, it'll be a throw. Of course, players are arguing whether that went past on which side of the flag, corner flag that went on. But now Bowman gets it forward to Souza. Souza battling for possession. Now possession back with the Fury. As it's Hayworth getting dispossessed here by Andrade, and that ball will go out of play off of the Rams. 
Actually, he'll go off of the Fury as the Rams get the ball back. And that'll be a foul there, a great, a hard challenge on by Nikola, Nikolas Jelicic on Cole de Normandy, who's playing a little bit deeper, trying to get the ball forward. It'll be a free kick here for the Rams, and it looks like the way they're setting it up, they're gonna play a long free kick. Of course, 30, 30th minute now, the Rams are trying to get the ball forward with a bunch of players on the edge of the penalty area. It's gonna be Souza standing over the ball with about six players over on the um, Fury box, but it's gonna be kicked and blocked out of play. So great block there by Hayworth as it goes back to the Boston Rams. So now ball played forward and out of play off of the Fury as it's over on the near side. Now this is Bowman once again. Bowman looking for a throw, looking for DeNormandy, but it's gonna be cleared out here. A very slow Rams chance here as it's now it's gonna be the end of a chance as the ball goes out of play off of the Rams. So not a lot of fast passages of play here for the Rams here in the first half. And the ball will go back to Matt Keyes as the, the Fury trying to get four. Now Conrad will have to clear it out of his own end. Of course, the, the ball brought down here by Keegan Campbell, who they swapped the wings, it looks like. Keegan Campbell now playing on the left side, trying to use that left side, as Tom Quinlan mentioned, trying to get the ball more on that left side. And Campbell will take the throw over on the far side of the field. And in the last 10 minutes, when you look at this Real Boston Rams team switching up the pressure, getting more aggressive, playing the ball to Gustavo Santos, which we've seen. So you're seeing progression throughout the game. You're seeing the Rams noticing where they have to adjust. As Souza loses that 50-50 ball and it'll roll all the way to Brett Conrad. I think the most important thing is that they stay calm and composed. You know, as aggressive as this Ottawa Fury team is, you can still find some discrepancies in this back line and it all just comes down to waiting for that last touch and, and not rushing anything as that ball goes off of Andrade's head and out of play. So 32nd minute here, the Fury lead one to nothing. The goal coming in the 10th minute on a Carl Hayworth penalty, penalty shot. is the only goal from either side in this game as the Rams are, who came into this game scoreless in 237 minutes. That tally is now up to about 269 minutes as the ball is cleared out here by Bowman. So as we mentioned, the wing switching, Cost, Jimmy Costa is not afraid to switch his wings, of course. In the game against the Vermont Voltage, Andrade played at first on the left side and then switched over to the right side. And he ended up getting a goal from each wing. So very versatile wings here from Real Boston. I think that's a good sign too. It shows that these wingers, these flankers are able to use both their feet and they're technically sound and you know, it comes down to seeing how well they can match up against the outside backs for the opposing Fury. And I think that's you know what Jimmy's waiting on right now is we're 32 minutes and to see when he should make that switch, if he should make it at all. Of course, the Rams do have six substitutions, so they could take one here in the first half as Santos tries to play it along the left wing, but it gets dispossessed before he could play a pass forward. So now the ball on the far side with Lortno Myth. Uh, Matthew, but it's going to be played a little bit too far as it's collected here by Conrad. So the Rams are working a lot out of the back here in the first half. Conrad throwing the ball more often than kicking it forward. As this broken passage of play is finally going to be brought down here on the right side for the Ottawa Fury. They're on the top of the box. Cross comes in and in comes a missed header by Eddie Jones, and that ball will go out of play for a goal kick. But great job there by Matt Keyes, making sure that Eddie Jones could not get, get on the other end of that header. Make sure you follow your Real Boston Rams all season long on Twitter, at Real Boston Rams, and on Facebook, www.facebook.com slash Real Boston Rams, and on Instagram, at Real Boston Rams. 
So goal kick here played by Conrad. Headed forward by, Do by Dombra as looks like Eddie Jones is gonna try to come down with him. Now it's Santos over to Anderson. Anderson looking for Souza. Souza trying to get Santos again. But a, lo a lot of this broken passage of play not going the way of the Real Boston Rams. But that ball now headed out for a goal kick. So it'll be another goal kick for Brett Conrad. Conrad, who actually struggled in the first few games of the season, gave up three goals to CFC Azul, but kept a clean sheet, sheet against the Seacoast United Phantoms. Has only allowed one goal here, which was on the penalty kick. So a much better goal against record in the last few games as opposed to the start of the season. Look at the rest of this Rams uh, schedule coming up. The Revolution, they play on Tuesday at Veteran Memorial Stadium in New Britain, Connecticut for the charity event. But, I mean, Western Mass at home, GPS Portland at home, Seacoast United at home. Uh, you know, a very winnable schedule for Real Boston. A little score update here as, this, as CFC Azul and Seacoast United are scoreless. As that shot goes over the top of the crossbars and it's going to be deflected off of a Rams player. So it'll be a corner for the Fury. So 36th minute here as the corner is gonna come in. One nothing the one nothing the Ottawa Fury lead. As this, as the center defenders come forward. And that was a huge push there by Sean Foster on Davide Dambra as the referee calls both players over to have a little conversation. Of course, Dambra trying to make the argument that he's just trying to establish his own position. As they both two go at it again, here comes the corner kick and this ball is gonna be fisted out. And it looks like there's a little bit of contact in the box and it's gonna be a free kick for the Real Boston, but a great punch there by Brett Conrad. So as I mentioned before, Seacoast United Phantoms and, the, and CFC Azul playing near in the 31st minute there, it's a scoreless match. Of course, two more bottom of the table teams. Now this is, uh, this is Russo playing it forward to Andrade. There's gonna be a foul here by Van, Comper Van Compernol. So players will come forward once again for the Rams as they will line up on the edge of the box. Sousa will take the free kick here once again course the designated free kick taker as it looks like five players at the top of the box here comes Sousa's kick it's gonna be a nice one it's gonna be his hit it out here and it's gonna be cleared out but it's gonna be a foul I believe on Matt Keyes who knocked over Chad Bush the goalkeeper it's a little too aggressive that ball could have been won by anybody in the box it was 50 50 it's just so close so one of the better chances for the Rams here in the, la in the few the last few minutes. As Anderson will give chase here at, at the top as the, the Fury play it out of the back. Now it's Dombra trying to play the long ball forward, but a Anderson was not making the run. So a lot of miscommunication here. Of course, there's been a lot of interchange between the lineups. Anderson is inserted back into the starting lineup. More recently, he actually started as a center forward, but now is playing a little bit deeper as Jimmy Costa is trying to put a more attacking options here for the Rams. So cleared out here by Davide Dambra. And it looks, looks like the Normandy is playing a little bit deeper as well as the ball is played out to the wing now. This is Van Kompernol, Van Kompernol trying to get the cross, and he does. There's going to be a shot on goal. Oh, wow. It's going to be another goal for the Ottawa Fury. What a connection right there. I mean, you look at the job that Ottawa did working that ball down the flank. Jacob Van, Comp Van Kompernol. So Jacob Van Kompernol was challenging on, on the wing, and it looks like Carl Hayworth made the great near post run and just slotted in the back of the net as... Matt Keyes was caught a little bit out of position there, and now the Ottawa Fury go up two to nothing. So Carl Hayworth now with both goals 
in this game. One coming on a penalty, penalty in the 10th minute. And then this coming off of a cross from the assist that I'm assuming is going to go to Jacob Van Kompernol. Just a great finish home. Ottawa just playing and playing the ball on the ground, keeping it in the ground. So ball played forward, but Andrade couldn't get on the other end of it. Of course, Anderson was offside, so he couldn't touch it. And that ball that was cleared out will go off of Gustavo Santos, now playing more on the right wing. Yep, switching the wings. As I liked, as we mentioned before, yep. Costa switching, with switching the wings with Andrade and Santos now. I don't know how I feel about that yet. I mean, I really did think that the pressure the Rams are bringing on that side with Andrade is uh, the referee going to call back the throw in. Uh, you know, I just, I really just don't think that you need to make that many adjustments as much as you just need to work on focusing, keeping the ball. The Rams aren't possessing right now. I mean, that's that's the make or break that's keeping them two goals down. I think at halftime with about six minutes left in this first half, Jimmy's got to preach, hey guys, we got to keep the ball. So that long throw played out as Keys will keep it from being a corner kick. And Souza now challenging here with Van Kompernol. Souza trying to keep the ball in play, looking for Andrade, but it's going to be headed out. Now this is De Normandy. De Normandy in the midfield, over by center field. Gets it over to Souza. Souza playing a long ball for to Gustavo Santos. Something could be on here as Santos comes down with the ball, looking to try to get the cross in. Fakes a few times. Now plays a note or the goal got line and forces the corner. So the corner goes off of Van Kompernol and it'll be the third corner for the game for the Real Boston Rams. Get one back, you make it a game again. You just wanna get one for the confidence. You don't need to worry about getting two. I mean, the Rams just have to believe that they can break this impeccable back line right now for Ottawa. It looks like Thomas Ballantine is looking to come on for the Rams. And he will, they'll make the switch as it looks like Anthony Bowman will come out of the game. He was about to actually take the corner with Souza playing more in the box to try to get a header on the ball. So now um, Bowman's day is done. And Ballantine gets the long cross in and it'll be cleared out here by the Fury. So, so Ballantine trying to keep it in the Ottawa half. Now the Fury get the ball back. They could be on the break with two players coming forward. The play, ball plays is out, is played out wide to Jacob Barron. Barron plays it back momentarily and then the Rams have possession once again. Gus Santos coming back and playing some defense now. I think the Rams is playing with some urgency. I asked you that question earlier just because, you know, just they seemed rattled. You know, it looks like these, this Rams team just didn't understand how to handle that pressure of, you know, Ottawa, and they just seemed like they were letting them walk all over them. Different story, though, the last 10 minutes. 43rd minute now, the Fury lead 2 to nothing. Of course, with added time, not on the scoreboard, we'll have to wait as looks like Hayworth trying Ooh. to do the back heel over to Manginas, but Manginas, I think, is going to be offsides, and he is. Back heel, very pretty on the eyes. A very nice flick back, and, you know, that's the clinical passing that we're talking about today with Ottawa. They're finding the holes forcing the Rams defense to open up and uncomfortable for them. You know, keys can't be everywhere in that center of the pitch and that's where they're really starting to create a lot of their chances. It's a good job by Ottawa it's faulting this. Uh, what we know is, is a capable defensive lineup. So as I was saying before, the additional time will be kept by the referee. We won't know how much added time will be added on as Conrad collects up the ball, play to a little bit too far in front of Hayworth. And they'll play it out the back once again. They've been doing that a lot so far in this game, the Rams have, playing out of the back. But of course, the Rams turn over in the midfield once again. And now it's, it looks like Ballantino just came into the game, getting the, getting the ball back. Now giving it away to Andrade, back to Ballantino on the far side. Ballantino, on, Ballantino battling with his fellow number on the Ottawa Fury as that ball will be played out of bounds. So 44th minute now, we're about a minute away from extra time if there's any added time on in the first half. As Bush plays it out of the back, plays a long ball forward as 
Dombra will come down with it. Now it's going to be Souza getting it over to Santos. Santos trying to keep it in bounds. He doesn't. And the ball will go back to the Fury. So a lot of miscommunication here. Ball's played a little bit too far for Rams to get on the end of. And that's resulted in a, a nil-two deficit for the Real Boston Rams. So here's Van Compernol with the long throw, get, trying to look for Eddie Jones. Actually, that was Hayworth. Hayworth comes down with it. The Fury skipper now gets it over to the wing, and now it's Santos playing back. And now it's Manginas. Manginas gets the ball off of a Rams player, and it gets it out for a long throw. So now something else could be on here for the Ottawa Fury as they're pressuring once again here in the 45th minute. So Fury lead two to nothing. A long th throw coming from Jacob Van Compernol, the left back for the Ottawa Fury. And here it comes. It's going to be played a little bit short. It's going to be headed away and punched out by Brett Conrad. That's all he could really do. As it was headed by Os Lievensi. It'll be a throw on the far side. Now it's Hayworth getting the ball in the box, but is dispossessed there by Dombra. And he goes down and gets the Rams get a little bit of an advantage, and now the foul is called. So Souza is playing the ball quickly as we're into additional time here. Of course, now it's up to the referee's discretion as the long ball played too far forward for Eric Anderson. Looks like the Rams are just going to want to get into the halftime, just staying down to and you know make the adjustments going into the second half. So headed away here by Keys, as the Rams would love to get a goal here to end the first half, but it doesn't look like it is. But here comes Andrade. Andrade gets the ball back. And it looks like it's going to be a foul here on the far side of the field as Andrade was being challenged there. But it looks like I can't tell who it is on the far side of the field. It looks like Arthur Pieperkoff is the one who is guilty with the challenge, and he'll get booked with the, with the yellow card. Of course, earlier in the game, Van Compernol had a similar play but did not get booked. But now the referee kicks the caution out as this ball is played long and it's gonna get headed out and cleared by the Fury. To Normandy challenging for the ball as the ball goes off of um, Sandra Rashkovic. As we're still in added time, the referee is gonna let the play, the play for the Rams go out. As it's played back to Davide Dombra as the Rams try to keep possession here at the end of the first half looking for a goal here. Now it's Valentin playing the ball on the far side of the field and it's gonna be cleared out almost but now it falls for Gustavo Santos. Two quick touches in the box, and it's going to be out of play, and it'll be a goal kick. And that might just about do it here in the first half. So Gustavo Santos had it in the box. Looked like a good chance to get a cross in, but just couldn't bring the ball down. So still in additional time. Stoppage time here in the first half. It's all up to the referee's discretion. Of course, we had a time delay early as it's the goal kick by Bush, headed forward by Andrade, and it'll go all the way back and out of bounds. Looks like the Ottawa Fury just have to get it past midfield, and actually that's gonna be end of the halftime whistle, so after 45 minutes of play, the Fury lead two to nothing. Both goals scored by Carl Hayworth, once off a penalty in the 10th minute, and once off of a penalty in the, or excuse me, once off of a cross in the 38th minute. So, so I'll just ask, uh, before he goes out and does his MCing gig, I'll ask Tom Quinlan one last question. Tom, what do you think of this first half? Yeah, it was a rough first half for the Royal Boston Rams. It's hard to face the facts, but I mean, the Rams were playing on the back of their heels the entire first half, couldn't really get anything going momentum-wise. And I think that going forward throughout the rest of this game, the Rams need to find a way of attacking because working the ball in the air is not happening right now. I think if the Rams can figure out how to keep the ball on the ground and just focus on possession, this game could change. Of course, the sun is setting setting here in eastern, Mass eastern Massachusetts and the light floodlights are on when what looked like it could be have sprinkled a little bit, it's actually turning into a little bit more of a, a pleasant evening. It is about, it's at 72 degrees here in eastern Mass, so it's a very, very beautiful night. Now, of course, the, the like I mentioned, the Fury are up two to nothing. Both goals scored by Carl Hayworth. Hayworth has scored a penalty kick in the 10th minute at once Keegan Campbell has fouled. Uh, Keegan Campbell came in a little bit too hard on 
uh, Pana Manginas. And then in the thir 38th minute, Manginas put in a beautiful cross over to the Carl Hayworth in the middle for to give put the Ottawa Fury up two to nothing. Of course, Andrade had a few chances in the first half, but not. But still, the Rams still looking for their a, a goal. They are goalless in their last two matches coming into this game, and are still trying to look for their first goal since they Andrew Souza scored in Ottawa back in early May. So now with. So now back from his MCing job, it's Tom Quinlan back next to me. Tom, how is that? How is that halftime show for you? Kids got energy. Kids got energy. So much energy that my voice actually uh, just broke through the speakers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, second half action coming up between the Rams and the Fury, and you know, down to nothing, Davis. It's important for the Rams to get off to a very hot start. Uh, Keedy Cam, uh, Keedy Siegel was warming up. I know that. Uh, I don't know if Brett Conrad will finish out this game, but I know that Jimmy Costa gave a fiery halftime speech in there. I mean, you couldn't help but not be frustrated with everything that you saw the Rams producing. They're much better than that, what they've shown so far, and I think it comes from the midfield game. Ottawa just completely dominating from Jump Street, so you can't falter, uh, or you can't, uh, it doesn't go unnoticed what Ottawa's done. But, you know, the Rams really just need to start playing better in the midfield uh, if they want to come back in this game. I mean, two games in hand, Ottawa has on Real Boston. So as the second half starts, Real Boston needs to get points after this. So the second half whistle has gone underway. So we're back underway here at Muscato Stadium. Now the Rams going from right to left. Of course, the Rams wearing their home blacks while the Ottawa Fury are wearing the, their white jerseys with their with their blue lettering and numbers. Now it's Andrade getting a good run on the left side. Andrade trying to get a cross in, but it's a great tackle there. And it'll go out of play, but uh, Francis Latorno Matthew had a great tackle on Andrade to prevent the cross from coming in. Now it's gonna go off of the Fury once again. Now Ballantine, who was substituted late in the first half, I believe the 43rd minute he came in, and he's Coming in as a substitute right back, and now it's going to go back out to Keegan Campbell in the back line. Both teams have six substitutions. The only difference is that the Fury are holding, or do not have an extra goalkeeper, so God forbid Chad Bush gets hurt, they're going to have to put in a position player and tell, and tell him to put on the gloves. But the ball played forward and out of play as Arthur Pieper, Pieperkoff was looking for the ball over the top. So... We, we talked about it a little, a little bit. So you're, the keys for the second half for the Rams, as you mentioned, to get out a little bit faster. They did look a little bit sluggish. Mike Agostino said that both ha teams have heavy legs since they both had games on Friday. So we'll see how that plays into the second half as we get into the later moments of this game. So now the ball's on the far side of the field. Campbell with the throw. He'll get it into DeNormandy, but it's hit back right back out. Now Hayworth trying to come down with it, but it's kicked forward by Ostliavensi, and we'll go back to the goalkeeper. So Fury up two to nothing here in the 48th minute of tonight's contest. Both goals coming by the way of Carl Hayworth. <laughs> as this ball is cleared out here by Matt Keyes and Adrade trying to come down with it. Now it's to Normandy. To Normandy looking for Souza who's making a run forward but it's gonna get kicked back here by Nicholas Ilicic. And that one is kicked out of bounds. It's a little missed up there by Chad Bush. He hasn't had many so far in this game. Of course, he has two saves in the game thus far, one by a really hard shot by Manny Andrade off of the uh, right wing. As this one is out of play over on the far side, it's gonna be a Rams throw. Actually, it's gonna be a Fury throw, excuse me. So as I mentioned, six substitutions for both teams, four midfielders and two forwards for the Fury. A, a two d two defenders, two mid three midfielders, a forward, and a goalkeeper for the Real Boston Rams. Foul here by um, Osli Avensi, and a ball will go for a fu Fury uh, free kick. 
So that ball is hit out there by Thomas Ballantine over on the near side of the field. Ballantine coming in in the 43rd minute to take a corner late in the first half and will stay over on the, uh, on the at left back side. So of course, of course, Tom, we talked a lot about how the Rams try to is trying to do different looks here, trying to swap their uh, midfielders. What do you, uh, other changes do you expect? <clears throat> well, you know what? I think the midfield has got to change up. I think you're going to see, I think you take Souza out at some point, or you, you take out one of your attackers if you, you're worried about giving up another goal, just because, I mean, the progression of the ball has not been great. And, I mean, you don't want to take out Souza because he's one of your best attackers, but if you know, possession's not being kept and he can't get the ball, then he's useless out there. Now it's Heyman with the long free kick into the box and it's going to go out of play. I mean, you know, this has been one of the recurring themes we've seen throughout this match. Suzu who got two goals in Ottawa, you know, completely silent here. It's not that he's been playing poorly. He's just been locked down and he can't find any holes. So long kick by Conrad out played out of bounds. Or yeah, out of bounds by Suza. The di referees disagreed for just a, a quick second. So it would be Van Kompernol doing a long throw forward. Campbell gets it forward to Gustavo Santos. But now it falls for the Fury. Something could be on here as the ball's played, a long ball played forward to uh, Piperoff. And that'll go out of bounds for a goal kick. And you know what? I, I think another thing, too, is that the Rams need to find a way to keep the ball on the ground. It's not, it's, it's just been one of the things they haven't done all game. And it's, just, it's a real big factor because that's how you gain possession and that's how you start working the ball. Now ball forward to Andrade. Andrade trying to work the wing. He tries to get uh, tries to get his past uh, Sean Foster there, but he kicks it out of bounds. Foster trying to get the ball back with his team. Selfish right there. Very selfish. <laughs> Cheeky. Now it's Thomas Ballantine with the long, looking for the long throw. Eric Anderson trying to find space, but the ball will go into Souza and it is dispossessed there by uh, Number 12, Jacob Barron. Barron has actually had a great game just playing more as a holding midfielder for the Ottawa Fury. Has not come forward a lot. He's kind of left that to his skipper, Carl Hayworth. As this ball is cleared out as Matt Keyes brings it down. And of course, we've talked about the, def the defense before. This is the first time we've seen Davide Dombra play at home in the center of, center of defense. Of course, Paxton, pa Paxton Ballard available off the bench. So we'll see if he, they make some substitution regarding him. Now it's Osli Avensi doing a one-two with Souza, getting it back to Keys, and they will play it out the back once again. Looks like Ali Cesare is getting ready to check in for Real Boston. Nice little flick yeah, there from PDR Ottawa, keeping the ball in the middle of the pitch and having possession and we're making Real Boston find that space. So Souza trying to play the ball forward to Anderson who's now playing more up top. De Normandy is playing a lot deep deeper than he usually does. He's usually the 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 uh, ran, the Rev the Revolution Academy project is um usually plays up top for the Rams but is now playing a little bit deeper with Eric Anderson getting some reps up top. So now it's Keys who will slide tackle that out of bounds over on the far side. And the throw will go to the Fury as they try to get players forward and get a third goal to put this game out completely out of reach. Now it's talked about a lot actually, Tom, Tom is with a two goal lead is kind of that weird, uh, that weird point for any team as substitutions coming on for the Rams. But two goal lead, you don't really know whether to take your foot off the gas pedal or whether to keep going. Of course, if you keep going, you're kind of prone at the back. But if you take your foot off, then some chances could come for the Rams, so the Fury in an in interesting position here. Well, I mean, if you're the Fury, you want to keep the, I think you want to keep the pedal down. You want to keep pressing on. You don't have to score goals, and you don't have to keep going forward. And that's one of the uh, things that people in soccer uh, in America are trying to understand, as it looks like Gustavo Santos coming off for Real Boston, and Eric Anderson 
So Paul Latif and was going to come on for Gustavo Santos, and Ali Sozeri will give it will come on for Eric Anderson. As now it is Ali Sozeri coming up uh, at the top. So maybe that was the reason why that Eric Anderson was playing up top was so that DeNormandy could start playing a little deeper, so that way Sozeri could come on as another striker. But to go back to what I was just saying before about you know Ottawa keeping the pressure, you want to keep the pressure, keep the pedal to the metal. It's just keep about keeping possession right now and not letting Real Boston get any type of opportunity. Keeping the ball in your half of the pitch will do that. So go out for a goal kick as the ball is played too far forward for uh, Carl Hayworth. And of course we've seen a lot of over the top balls played over by Brett Conrad, but he's been prone to throw the short ball. As now as Sozeri who comes down with it, gets his first touch of the game, but is dispossessed once again by Barron of the Fury. So Barron trying to make a good long run, but and is going to be fouled here. He's. Uh, it looks like Sozeri is going to get called for the foul as he's giving uh, Barron a really hard time. Then Keyes came in and cleared the ball out. The ref tried to let that the passage of play uh, keep going to try to give Fury a little bit of a referee's advantage. You know, Cesare stabbed at that one and I think that's what the referee saw and you know that's why advantage was played and you know Cesare vouching that the ball should be moved back behind the half line and the referee doesn't give it to him so it'll be a free kick in the attacking front for Ottawa. So now it's going to be a, fr a long free kick for Ottawa. They're not really bringing a lot of players forward as you normally would from that distance as Sozeri is going to battle for the ball on the far side and it's going to go out of uh, off of a Fury player. I believe that was uh, Manginas on the far side, but ball played quickly. Now it's brought down by DeNormandy. He's playing very deep. This is the deepest I've ever seen him play for the Rams. As the ball is crossed by Thomas Ballantine. And it's going to go out of play. Now this ball's now a chance here for Hayworth once again. He brings the ball over to the right wing, trying to get past three Rams players, but eventually it's Davide D'Ambra who clears the ball out. Of course, Tom, also the schedule for the Rams, as you mentioned before, a lot of games and a lot of days might play as it looks like Hayworth is called for offsides. So they play, they're going to, this is the second of five games over nine days, so that's definitely going to play a huge part and how many substitutions um, the Rams use. I think you really just want to focus with your you know, core guys though, and then you know, I mean it's, it's tough to really get a look as that was a very nice flick on by Souza there, but nobody was there to uh, you know, assist. But I mean, when you look at what the Rams have, attacking wise, it's very, very promising. I just think it's a, a matter of communication and there's not enough consistency with the guys that are out there. I don't think there's enough consistency with play on the pitch, whether it be in training or in game situations. These guys, it's, it's just, it's tough to get in that groove, I think, for them right now. So 57th minute here, the Ottawa Fury are up two to nothing. Both goals coming in the first half, by the way, of Carl Hay Hayworth. The best one is, he is, is Hayworth gives way again as Keyes had to head it back to his goalkeeper. So Hayworth has been an absolute pest for the Real Boston Rams so far tonight. Listed as a midfielder, but has been playing up top, up top a lot so far in this game. Now DeNormandy gets possession of the ball back, but plays it too short for Paul Latif. Latif, of course, coming off the bench. Now this is Ballantine. Ballantine shielding the ball away, and now it's Andrade. Andrade will try to look for Osli Avensi, and it's going to go off of Osli Avensi for a Fury throw. So Paul played forward, looking again for Hayworth. So they're still looking for him to try to get a hat trick here. Of course, he's on hat trick watch with a double pack so far today. Now this is uh, Rakovic gets out, and the shot is going to be on for Manginas, but it's blocked by a Rams player. So cross comes in, but it's going to be too far forward for Brett Conrad. As it was Van Kopernol who played it with the ball too far forward. Now Ballantine. Ballantine played it forward to, Su to uh, Sozeri. Sozeri looking for Souza, but Souza wasn't able to get on the other end of that one. 
So the Fury have dominated the midfield in this game as the, their 4-4-2 formation has really worked to their benefit as this ball is cleared out by Brett Conrad. Mm, poorly. That was just a terrible clearance by Conrad. I mean, he couldn't do much with it. He had played off his foot, but is that one into the box and Conrad can make the easy save, but I mean, you know, he's, he's not getting you know much help from his the rest of his defenders on the outside uh, who are you know given a lot of space down those wings. So ball fisted forward to Sozeri, but he was, it looks like the flag is up and it's gonna be an advantage play, but it looks like he was called for offsides as the flag came down, but this ball's played over the top now as Eddie Jones goes, tries to get on the other end of it, but David Adambra does a great job heading it back to Brett Conrad. So now Souza gets it over to Andrade. Andrade plays it out of bounds. It looks like he was injured there on the play, and it's going to be a foul here by Latorno Matthew. Francis Latorno Matthew, who's been playing on the right the entire game. There's not been a lot of position switches for the Fury as they've stayed pretty much in their 4-4-2 formation. They don't need to change. They really don't. I mean, their form is and their shape is absolutely phenomenal right now. I mean, they're really doing a great job pressuring. I think, if anything, they've changed a few things up top, but as that one is played all the way to the far corner and cleared out by Ottawa, I think for the most part what you could say that they've done well is is keeping the ball on the ground and, you know, the passing and communication, which they've, you know, worked so well at uh, improving on from their 4-1 loss to Portland just a couple of, just last night. So 60th minute now, it's now trying to remind you for the Rams trivia teaser as Adley Sorzeri tries to get the ball back in the midfield. Of course, the Confederation Cup's going on this weekend as this ball is played over the top by Hay to Hayworth. Oh, Hayworth wow. chips the goalkeeper and he's gonna get his hat trick goal as the Fury gets a third goal of the match. Nan in it, nan in it, chips it up to himself, lets it come on his foot, gets past Conrad and puts it home, hat trick for the Ottawa man and three nothing, 60 minutes in. Just a very nice touch to finish at home. It was looks like it was a great ball forward played by Jacob Barron, who's had a great game here in the midfield for the Ottawa Fury. He gets it forward and and Hayworth, who has uh, we've seen him have some yeah. great touches so far in this game, gets chips basically chips the goalkeeper and heads it in for his hat trick goal. And you heard the little sports center sound. That's only because of how impressive that play was, moving the ball up from the midfield and, and, and finding Hayward in the air like that. Well done. So now Sousa battling for the session with Eddie Jones, and now Davide Dombra comes over to help. And now it's Keyes trying to get the ball forward. So a 3 nothing deficit now for the Rams. Of course, they've lost earlier 3 nothing to the uh, to CFC Azul here at Muscato Stadium. Now Andrade trying to get on the other end of it, tries to look for Sozeri, but the ball is gonna be played back to the goalkeeper, Bush. Bush has not had to do too much between the pipes today as the Rams haven't really gotten any distinct chances since the first half. Now ball played forward by Conrad, and this is headed out of bounds here by Francis Latorno Matthew. So quick throw by Ballantine, Souza trying to come down with it. He said it quick, and that's why Souza couldn't uh, control that balance. Then should have just waited. Let Souza get position. Eddie Jones looking up for Pieperkoff. Pieperkoff is beat there by Ballantine. That'll be cleared out. Great clearance there by Ballantine. He's had a tough few games at the left pack position. He kind of lost his spot for a while, but is getting integrated a little bit more and more now as the Rams get into their busy part of their schedule. You think the Rams should just start off playing with three in the back and just be midfield heavy? I mean, let's be honest. Outside of Matt Keyes, uh, you know, Thomas Ballantin, I mean, this Rams team does do have a lot of great defenders, but they're midfield heavy, and they're attack midfield heavy. So I think, you know, do, do you think it'd be better if they played like a 3-5-2 or, or some type of formation like that? Because, you know, when I look at that, I think to myself, hey, you know, at least this team is able to have more of a possession and there's a lot more trust in the defense. So ball brought down here and a foul here by Davide Dombra, brought down there by Eddie Jones. By the way, Hayworth just came off and gave way to Loic Miliani. So Hayworth's day is done. He ends his day with a hat trick in the 63rd minute. He's had a fantastic game. He gives the captain's armband away as well. I can't really tell who that armband belongs to now. But a great game there for Carl Hayworth as he absolutely 
picked apart the Rams back line. Yeah, all game, all game. And you know, it goes back to what I was just saying before. Do you think the, you know what I mean? The Rams, midfield's heavy. And you know they, this defense just had a tough time trying to you know control that attack. So free kick from 25 yards out, taken wow. on goal, and that goes right in. So a goal for the Ottawa Fury on the free kick from 25 yards out. He curls it around the wall, but it was to the goalie side. Loic Milani. So so Moloch, Loic Milani just came on and then curls it around with his left foot to put the Ottawa Fury up four to nothing. Man, that was a, just another beautiful so shot so taken on by the Fury. So pretty. I mean, bends it around the wall, finds it in the bottom left corner, and Conrad out of position, had no chance at it. I mean, one more for Conrad, and I think you might start thinking about putting Keity Siegel in there just to keep it within range. Of course, Keity Siegel is on the bench and available to come off if they do want to make a change between the pipes. Of course, they're allowed to use six substitutions, so goalkeeper substitutions are a little bit more common. Ball tried to play forward to Sozeri, and Andrade tries to get the ball back, but is unable to. And actually, it's funny that you mentioned it, that they go three at the back. Me and some of the other um, Rams uh, personnel have talked about maybe going three at the back, of course, Keegan Campbell ha does has ex yeah. have experience at a center, more of a center defender role, but he does play out on the wing. Paxton Ballard. And of course, Paxton Ballard. Davide Dombra has also can also play out on the w wing. So it's definitely been brought up the f before. So it's very interesting that you made m made that connection just as I have. Well, I mean, like I said, it, it's, it's all about the midfield play. The Rams have one of the better heavy midfield, or one of the deeper midfield teams in this conference. So ball played forward to Sozeri. Sozeri trying to get the other end oh. of it. That's the first shot we've seen in the first half. He brought it down. He was a long ball forward. He brought it down, fighting off two Fury defenders and was not able to hit it, hit it with his left foot. So Ballantine gets it forward to Andrade. Andrade trying to find Sozeri again, but he was in offside position. Now DeNormandy, as Sozeri gets it back, tries to bl block it, and he does, but the Fury get back possession. So now Barron plays it out wide over to Manginus. And that bar cleared out by Matt Keyes. It looks like another substitution is gonna about to get ready for the Fury. It looks like Justin Maheu is going to come on. So played out of bounds. The Fury playing a little bit more relaxed now with the four goal lead here in the 66th minute. Looks like he's. Looks like uh, the, the substitute Justin Mahey who's going to be taking off. Arthur Sean Foster. Oh, Sean Foster. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, Arthur Pipper. No, you're right. No, that was Eddie Jones. So Eddie, Eddie Jones. Jones comes off. Started at one of the two striker positions, as of course the w we talked about it in the pregame show. The Ottawa Fury yeah, like to rotate their forwards. Eddie Jones, Jones, Jones getting the Mr. start Eddie tonight. Jones. Number 15, Eddie Jones. Entering the so game. on the far side of the field, the Fury Number have 15, it trying to get the cross 15, in, but Keegan Campbell Andrew. does a good job clearing it out for a Fury corner. And you know what? You force Ottawa to that corner. And you look at what Ottawa did. They gained space. The Rams had to get back and, and save themselves on defense. And, you know, they, they force at least Ottawa to push them out to the wings. They're not. It's not like they're getting into the box, but... You know, you can't give them down that space down the wings to begin with because then you, you, you put yourself in a position to where you have to force teams, you know, deep in. So Loic Miliani takes the corner, and it's going to be a foul, a push-off here by a Fury player in the box. We couldn't really see who it is. And Conrad plays it quickly over to Campbell, who now is playing on the left side, switching spots with Thomas Ballantine. So once again, the Rams are switching off their wings to try to get a different look. So Ballantin now on the far side, trying to find a Normandy, but is dispossessed there by Nicholas Jelicic. Switch the field. What's with the big touches? There you go. Find it, Cesare. Now, now forward to Sozeri. Sozeri trying to do what uh, Hayward did, and but Bush came way off his line, came out of the box, but now the ball is Andrade, and gives it away, and it will be cleared out for a Rams throw. <laughs> But as you mentioned, it was great ball through. So Zeri couldn't bring the ball down. But it was a great chance there by the Rams that goes begging. 
So now Sozeri trying to get the ball into the box, cannot get a handle on it, and it goes back to the Fury. So now the Fury just clears it forward, gets Thomas Ballantine, heads it back down. Now Ostley events, he tries to battle with Mil Milani. Now it's Barron. Barron controls the ball as he's been doing all night from that center midfield role. Forward to Jelicic. And now it's a ball played forward to Pieperoff. Pieperoff. Getting the cross in, and it's going to be cleared out by Davide Dombra. So now it's the game's more end to end with a, fi a, a faster pace to it. You see that with a lot of, of this American style game, you see a, a little slow at the beginning and then once some goals happen, you see a lot more end to end play near the end of each half. You know, the problem with that North American game, that North American game that you just brought up though, is that when you play too fast, you don't make the right decision, you overthink or you just you take too quick of a touch and you, you get foolish and you get lackadaisical, like right there on the foul from... Davide Dombra, like you said, on that yeah. foul. He's going to foul on Sandra Rashkovic. That's, that's a weak foul. You don't put your forearm into the back of the guy. Get position in front of him. You have time to close him out. Don't just give up the foul. That's how they get possession. And that's how Ottawa can take off time off this clock. I understand. Listen, Rail Boston, they're looking like they're checked out right now. That doesn't mean it can't change. It's just, you know, the attack has just been so good all night from Ottawa. It's just you, you have to find a way to slow them down. So and Carlo Basso is going to be the substitution coming on. He's going to take over uh, Jacob Van Kompernel's spot as it looks like uh, number 16, Francis Lethorno. Uh, Matthew is going to come play more of a defensive role. He's playing a little bit more of a winger role before. A long throw here by Brett Conrad as it's tried to be played forward by Latif. Now it's brought down here, and now it looks like Miliani trying to get a shot on, but it's dispossessed here by Dombra. But now back towards, actually, that's uh, that's Abasso who just came on doing a good run, and it's cleared out by the Rams. So 71st minute now. We'll take a moment now to remind you of the Rams trivia teaser as the Rams take a quick throw. Of course, the Confederations Cup going on this weekend with Spain having a 2-0 lead over Uruguay currently. We want to know who has won the most Confederations Cup in Confederations Cup history. Of course, that going back to 1997. Of course, if you know the answer, check out our Real Boston Rams Facebook page or follow us on Twitter at Real Boston Rams and use the hashtag Rams Trivia. Don't you think that Confederations Cup is a little much? I mean, let's go back four years ago to the last World Cup in South Africa, the last Confederations Cup. I mean, the U.S. was in the final, and now they're not even in it? I mean, what is this? Six teams? Come on. 32 teams throughout the nation get to play in the FIFA World Cup. Let's put all 32 in there. Let's get a little preview beforehand. You don't got to do the tables and that outlandish stuff. Do a round robin. Come on. It'd be fun. The international game needs a little spice out there. Wow, Quinlan. Go ahead and I, tell yeah, us I'm how just you're saying, really I, I just, I'm just saying, six teams, the Confederation Cup, what do you get out of that? You don't get anything out of those. You don't, because there's other, there's other talent out there. And, you know, when you look at what the Confederations Cup has turned into, it's become a showcase to see what the countries that are participating in those events could bring. I mean, Japan could very well be matched up with Brazil as that one's headed off of balance and out of play. But, I mean... I think if there, I think if you look at Brazil and Japan, you know Hondo, who, is, who plays on Japan, he's a. I just, I, I think there's just way more that you could do with this Confederations Cup. Six teams is just, it's, it's simply not enough for me. So Cesare will bring the ball down. Now leaves it to Souza. Souza trying to get the ball forward, trying to take it himself. He does draw the foul. It looks like that was Baron on the foul. He's really, he looks, like, he looks a little upset with his teammates for not coming farther forward, as it looks like. So it was only him and Sozeri that were coming forward for the Rams. But by the way, as we talk about a little bit more about the Confederations Cup, that actually was originally started by um, King Fahd, the king of, Sa of Saudi Arabia back in the 90s. And he took all the teams from each confederation and then just had them play a tournament. And then FIFA took, a took over in 1997. So that's how it originated. So it originated as traditional. A, a team of the Confederations as Sousa's free kick is cleared out as 
For I those of you that don't know Davis, Davis is like a Snapple bottle. Every under every cap, you find something else that's interesting that you can turn on. I just feel like I had to say that. I, 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 every time, every time I come on to the broadcast, or every time we are at, at training, you always you always bring something to the table that makes that makes you think, and it's like it always enhances your learning experience. I had no idea uh, that the Confederations Cup was started by a by a king in Saudi Arabia. That's interesting. Well, of course, they, Wikipedia is my main source. Hey, so. Wikipedia <laughs> turned into, a, Wiki, as much as teachers might not like to say, Wikipedia turned into a great source for uh, getting information. It's the 21st century. Get with it, people. Source. So, <laughs> say source again. All right, now it's Matt Keyes. <laughs> Matt Keyes plays it back. As the 74th minute now, as the Ottawa Fury, as we try to get back on track here, Ottawa Fury lead four to nothing with a hat trick thanks to Carl Hayworth, who is now on the bench. And then his replacement, Loic Milani, had an excellent free kick later, later in the second half. And that's how the, the four, 4 nothing result has resulted. As it you know, looks like the uh, Fury are just trying to waste the clock here. It's 75th minute time, so it's kind of a little bit more of time to waste. A little bit more time wasting will occur. With yeah. Valentine heading it forward, of course, it, it and we with the way the Rams are playing, it's going to be really hard for them to come back into this game. It goes back to what you were saying before. How you know should should Ottawa keep on the pedal? Well, you know what you saw what happens when they kept on the pressure. That was two goals ago, Davis. Yeah. And you know they kept the ball, they kept the pressure, and they kept on you know throwing on that throttle, and they exposed this young and inexperienced Real Boston Rams team. And not that they're inexperienced, but but in this setting of the USL PDL, I think Ottawa, you know, playing together a little bit more, they're more organized right now in this setting in the early going in the middle of June than the Real Boston Rams are, understandably so. Well, to go along with your point, we've seen a lot of firsts from the real, this Real team. Of course, this being an inaugural team. Right. Of course, the Fury have been around in the USL for about since 2008. Yeah. So they have, a like you said, they have a little bit more experience. The coach has been around for a while. He has a little bit more experience of dealing with players coming in. This is Jim Costa's first year as um, the Rams coach. Of course, he was the coach of the... Uh, the, Bo the Boston victory last year, but this is a whole new cast of characters mm -hmm. from what that team was last year. That's a brand new system, too. Boston victory, I would say. You look at what they did, and they were progressive, but now with this New England Revolution affiliation, the Revs and you know Real Boston Rams have a clear vision on how they want to develop their players, which is you know huge and uh, a numbers game here for Ottawa. So Fury trying to make another move forward. There's a nice low cross comes in from the left wing. As Peepercoff puts a high cross in now, punched out by Brett Conrad. This ball will go back down. It's dangerous still in the area. And now Brett Conrad goes on the ground as the shot from Carlo Basso ends the passage of play for the Ottawa Fury. You know, uh, looking over to my right here, uh, James Perry, the public address announcer, sitting with me. and made a great point just now. Uh, Finkelstein not being in the game has been a real noticement for this Real Boston Rams team. Uh, Luke Finkelstein, one of the better defenders at, at center mid. So him not being in the game, as you said earlier, and I mentioned he got two yellow cards as uh, Ottawa coming out and making the save there. Uh, his, his absence has been very, very noticeable. Of course, that ball playing being played through to Paul Latif. Latif has not seen a lot of touches since he's come into the game. Now ball played through there, Sozeri. Sozeri has space, but he will be called for offsides. So Sozeri has had a little bit of that problem trying to stay on sides. Of course, he had that problem a little bit against Seacoast. Um, he had a space a few times, but wasn't able to stay on sides. And as some more substitutions will come on for Real, uh, Real Boston, and as uh, Kento Nakamura will come on for Cano Col de Normandy, and Paxton Ballard will come on for Manny Andrade. So they will switch up the formation a little bit as playing some more okay. defenders in the back to try to keep this a 4 nothing deficit. I don't know if this is a glaring noticement, but I mean, I think for who he was and what he could have been to this team potentially, the absence of Ryan Maduro and him being released by the Rams not too long ago, that's imp I mean, I feel like he was a critical player on this team, and, and him being in the midfield to link up with Souza, and the fact that he's gone now, it's just really disappointing. And, and his absence uh, hurts the team. It's not like they can't recover, but it, you know, he would be a great asset. 
So Keys get forces a corner here for the Ottawa Fury. It's going to be Louis Milani uh, to take it over on the far side of the field. As players still coming forward for the Fury on corner kicks. So they're not letting off the, their foot off the pedal just yet as Keys hits the head start ball out. As it's the, we're approaching the 80th, approaching closer and closer to the final stretch of this game. Keegan Campbell clears a cross out once again. So now ball played forward over to Arthur Pieperkoff. Pieperkoff gets it over to Bossa. Bossa puts a shot on with his left foot, but it's gonna be blocked there by Thomas Ballantine. So now Campbell battling with Milani over on the far side, and he Milani forces the, actually it looks like Campbell got the goal kick. It looks like it might have gotten off of Campbell, but Milani was the one last one to touch it. So yeah, like we mentioned earlier, the Rams next game against the New England Revolution, and yes, the New England Revolution with Diego Fagundes. Um, Is that Bobby really the only player you can name on the well, Revolution? No, 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 Bobby, no, Bobby Shuttlesworth and Gwynn, you, you look at G Gabby, um, you just the, that Revs team. Uh, they had a tough four-three loss last night against Vancouver, but you know they really have a lot of promise. Jay Heaps is a great. I think he's a great manager for what he's done so far. A fire emotionally. Is why I think he's going to be there forever. Well, that's yet to be determined. But you know he's got the team going in the right direction right now, and that's important. So it's now the 80th minute. So we're on the final stretch of this game as the the Fury lead four to nothing. Uh, the captain, Carl, Carl Hayworth, with a hat trick. Two goals in the first half, one goal in the second half. And the other, his replacement, Loic Milani, got a free kick as the fourth goal. So the Rams facing a 4 nothing deficit. And they're going to look, they're going to, it looks as if as the result stays as it is, it looks it's going to be their second uh, loss by three goals or more on at home. Yeah, that first loss at home on opening night against CFC Azul was a rough one. So now the Fury playing a little bit with a slower pace as they're playing with their back defenders, getting it forward now to Burroughs. And now Sozeri gives chase, but the Fury, as they do very well, keeping the possession with their own team. So played forward here as Ballantine challenging here with Bossa. Now Nakamura getting his first touches of the game. That'll go... The ball will go out of bounds off of Letourneau Matthew, the right back for the Fury. He takes the quick throw looking for um, ba ba Basso. And now Basso gets it back, trying to find the chance. And Basso almost threw there, but it's cleared out there by the Rams. It's going to be a long week of training for Jimmy. I know that. I know he's going to want to get his guys ready. And, you know, you don't have a lot of time for New England on Tuesday. But, you know, Wednesday, the day after, home against Western Mass. You want to you wanna be able to get as much production out of your guys as you can, uh, but you also don't want to see them get hurt. So you know, this wasn't the way the Rams wanted it to go tonight against Ottawa, especially with the week that they have coming up. So I mean, this week alone, Revolution, Western Mass, GPS Portland on Saturday. So That's Basso tough. plays it back, and it's going to be a shot on, but it's going to be pinballed in the box. Looks like another good chance for the Fury. As now it's played forward to Latorno Matthew, and he gets it forward to Pieperkoff. Pieperkoff foul, looks like he might have been fouled in the box, but he really just cleared a slide tackle there by, there by Sozeri. I think one of the problems they have is that so their strikers have had to come all the way back to help with the defense, so like it's really having hindering them when they try to go forward. Yeah, I mean it's, it, I mean it's good to see the forwards are coming back and playing defense. It's not a lack of effort tonight. It's just a matter of connecting and finishing those passes. If they can do that, this is a different team. I mean, I think one of the things that really affected Real Boston tonight was that they didn't keep the ball on the ground. I mean, when you play the ball in the air, uh, the Rams have the advantage of. Got, having guys that have a good vertical leap as an injury and the training staff here at Oliver Rams High School will take a look at the Ottawa Fury man who's on one knee and starts walking away. But I mean, if you're able to keep the ball on the ground and you're able to possess and you're able to 
you know, make your defenders feel uncomfortable in their own zone. That's how you capitalize, and that's how you, you know, force the pressure. Ottawa forced you know, Real Boston really. to feel very uncomfortable on the outside, and they exposed their outside backs, and the center backs had to fill in for the outside backs, and when those center backs had to fill, there was open space in the middle, and that's where those balls in the, on the ground were played. So another substitution here for the, uh, the Fury, as it looks like Justin McHugh was the one who went down, so he comes out of the game as Emir Zernik, the Bos I believe the Bosnian, he's come to come, come into the game. And it's another chance here as Milani tries to get the shot in from a tight angle, but that'll go over the crossbar. Into the night as that ball sails into the very dark depths uh, here at Oliver Ames High School. So it's 8.48 here, p.m. Eastern time here. As we're getting to the later stage of this game, the 84th minute as the Fury are up four to nothing. A hat trick by Carl uh, Hayworth for the Fury is, the, is really the big story in this one. So, so now Osli Avensi gets the ball back and he gets it forward to Nakamura. Nakamura has a chance in the box, challenged there by four players, and it's gonna he's gonna run overrun and it's gonna go back to uh, Chad Bush. I think next game, if you're Real Boston, you know, playing against the Revolution in what is not a non-conference and non-league matchup, so I think you can experiment with a lot of things. Listen, you know, the Revs and the Rams are, are you know, two soccer teams with great IQs, obviously. that's that, that doesn't go unnoticed. But I think for Real Boston, in the situation that they're in right now and trying to develop their players, try a new different formation and see what three guys in the back can do for you. Midfield's heavy team. Let's see if they can, you know, start, you know, exhorting the pressure, you know, in the middle and finding Souza and, you know, having Souza connect on those final passes. Now, uh, Souza now, as you mentioned, gets the ball in the, in the in to the box and he gets a cross into Ali Soseri for a goal, Boston Rams. And that's exactly what you need to do if you want to succeed. That is uh, keeping the ball on the ground, forcing the pressure, and I mean, you find a guy like uh, uh, you find a guy like Souza, he's gonna find his strikers. So Souza's to Sozeri gets the Rams on the board. Now it's four to one for the Real Boston now trail, but that's a first goal there by Ali Sozeri, who's had chance after chance after chance all season, and he finally gets one in the back of the net. A great cross there by Andrew Souza. You know, you got four minutes left. You're down by three goals, you know, not including added time. You get one more here. I mean, this could turn interesting. I'm not saying it's, you know, going to happen, but it's not unfeasible at this point. So 86th minute now as the Fury now lead 4-1 to one. as they look to play with a little bit more urgency. You might see a little bit more time wasting, as you mentioned, from the Fury because the, the Rams could get back into here. Hurry, and it looks like Daniel Adair is lining up on the sideline to maybe come in for the Rams. So now it's all the, on the far side with Keegan Campbell being challenged by two players. Now it's forward to uh, Cazos, and Bazos gets it across, but it misses the far post, and that'll go out for a corner, actually, as it went off of one of the either the goalkeeper and Conrad or Keyes, who is in on the challenge. You really wonder what training is going to be like for these guys, for the Rams. I mean, not only is it going to be demanding physically and mentally, but I mean, you know, what are they going to have left at the end of this week? So now the, the Fury lining up a corner as it comes in from the near side. It comes in. It's going to be a punch out by Conrad, and da Dombra gets it away just a little bit farther, and Dombra, not, not, Dombra will now take it, and he gets fouled on the far side of the field. If, if they've done one thing well so far is that they've really shut down the Fury on these corners. So this ball is played over the top to Latif. Latif now on the le on left wing gets dispossessed here by uh, Milani, and he he'll lose it out. And he will lose it. Latif will lose it out for a goal kick for the Fury. Just want to let you home viewers know if you're looking to come out to a game at Oliver Rams High School in Moscato Stadium, you want to buy some tickets, jump online to bostonrams.com. Go buy your tickets. Only $5. Kids are free when you come on in. 
So get your tickets online now. Start reserving them. Next home game against Western Mass this Wednesday, 7 o'clock, and you can catch the broadcast here on Ustream.com starting around 6.50. So another substitution comes on here for the Rams as Daniel Adair will take off Russell Ost Levensi. -Le -Le Levensi, I should say, is I'm still he's a new player, so I still have not gotten used to saying his name. That's how those Italians, they, you know, they got the Levensi. You know, you have to put a little emphasis on it, the accent. It's 89th minute here as the Fury lead 4-2-1 as we get down to the final part of this game, as this ball played by Ballantine is played way too far ahead as Chad Bush will get it in time waste a little bit. Of course, as we mentioned before, the referee's discre it's the referee's discretion for extra time. We did have two injuries earlier in the game, so we wouldn't be surprised if we saw two or three minutes. The weather stayed beautiful, at least. I mean, that, that's, that's a positive thing that you can take from today. So now Sozeri comes down with it as he le gives way to Latif. Latif trying to get it forward to the running Campbell. Campbell now playing way forward as he tries to get some action for the Rams as Ballantine is gonna play it forward now for Latif. And actually it's gonna fall for Zozeri. This could be a chance here for the Rams. Zozeri comes down with it, leaves it, goes all the way to the other end, but Nakamura couldn't go get it to the other end of the box. A great chance for the Rams once again goes begging. Ooh, Kento had found some great space and Ali waited just the right amount of time a little too strong, though, on that little pass and on the through ball, and it went out of play for a goal kick. And 30 seconds left in regular time. Just to see how much stoppage time the Rams get here. So it'll be a goal kick here for the uh, Ottawa Fur Fury. Of course, as we mentioned many times, they have the Rams have a lot of games to play. One of them being the 60-minute game they're playing in Connecticut against the New England Revolution. Um, and then they have the game against the Western Mass Pioneers here at home starting at 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Isn't it weird that they're playing 60 minutes? You don't find that at all a little odd? Well, I mean, it's a friendly match, so you, that doesn't necessarily have to be uh, doesn't necessarily have to be the full 90 minutes. Both teams, in the thick of their schedule, they don't want to get anybody injured by playing a match that was too long. That's fair. I mean, I, I, just, I just feel like, you know what? I mean, these are, you got the two affiliates going up against each other. Let's just see who's got it. Fagundes versus Andrade. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? Go against, seeing how Fagundes could do against Campbell. Listen, or Keys. I'd like to see Matt Keys versus Fagundes. Who would win that type of battle? By the way, a little bit of a score update. The final time is gone. The game has gone final against CFC Azul and Seacoast United Phantoms. They result as they stay at a draw. So as the standings stand now, the CFC Azul now is tied on, on points with seven apiece with the Vermont Voltage for fourth place in the Northeast USL PDL division. As it looks like Ballantine will get the foul here on the near side of the field. That was Amir Zarnik, the substitute that came in on the foul. He hasn't gotten a lot of playing time, but with the, the Fury up by so much, we've seen a lot of different players here for the Fury. Ballantine's long ball played over to the far side of the field, and Sozeri comes down with it playing on the wing, and Paxton Ballard gets it forward to Ke Keegan Campbell. Campbell trying to come down with it, trying to get a cross in, but it's gonna be a foul. And that'll be the full time. That'll be the last passage of play as the Ottawa Fury will take this match four to one over your Real Boston Rams. So, final thoughts from Thomas Quinlan. Rough night uh, for the Real Boston Rams when you look at everything in perspective. Nothing was good in the final third. But I mean, it was Ottawa who came out aggressive and had more of a deadlier attack I would say if you want to look at what you take moving forward, you just you, you gotta you gotta be more controlled and possession is important and you know moving forward. The Rams, you know, I think just the mindset has to change just a little bit differently. A big game on t Tuesday, but more importantly, they gotta be ready for Wednesday.